Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Overstock.com by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or sell. Overstock is an internet retailer selling primarily furniture headquartered in Midvale, Utah. It was founded in 1999. The company initially sold exclusively surplus and return merchandise on an online e-commerce marketplace, liquidating the inventories of at least 18 failed dot-com companies at below wholesale prices. The company continues to sell home decor, furniture, bedding, and many other goods that are closed out merchandise. However, it also sells new products. In 2002, the company IPO'd. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid cap company, 2.3 billion market cap. They're trading at $54 a share and they have 43 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So the company had negative free cash flow every year, but they had their first positive free cash flow in a trailing 12 months. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses, and they have negative net income every year. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that's fairly steady. It did drop a lot in 2019, but it's at its highest point in a trailing 12 months for obvious reasons. People are looking for discounts. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is cost of revenue. And then the difference between those two numbers is their gross profit. So they had the highest gross profit in the trailing 12 months, over 400 million, much higher than 2019. And they have really high operating expenses. And this is pretty common with a company in growth mode. So they do have negative operating income every year. They do have a little bit of debt, so they have interest payments on their debt, and there's other income and expenses, and then of course taxes. So every year they do report negative net income, but it seems to be improving. In 2019, their net income was 80 million more than 2018. Their net income in the trailing 12 months was also $80 million more than 2019. Things seem to be improving. This is the statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. And then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. When you combine operating cash flow and CapEx, you get your free cash flow. The company generated a pretty good amount of free cash flow in a trailing 12 months, much better than prior years since it was negative. Since the company's operating with negative cash flow, they need money from somewhere to run their business. So they issued 95 million of stock in 2018, 83 million in 2019, and 33 million in the trailing 12 months. They also issued 40 million of debt in 2017, but paid $61 million off. So they decreased their debt load $20 million in 2017. In 2018, they decreased their debt load 40 million. In 2019, they decreased to 3 million. They did add $43 million of debt in the trailing 12 months. The most important part of any business is their operating cash flow because if a company can't generate positive cash flows from its operational business, it doesn't have much of a business because you cannot rely on debt and equity financing to run your business in the long term. They did have negative operating cash flow, but in the trailing 12 months, it looks really good. It's positive 155 million. And to calculate operating cash flow, it's net income, which was negative 49 million. And then you have to add or subtract the non-cash items that were passed through in the income statement. They had 30 million of depreciation, 15 million of stock-based compensation. You also have to adjust for changes in working capital. That was an increase of $149 million. Changes in working capital are changes in accounts receivable, accounts payable, inventory, things like that. So things seem to be improving for this company, and I think they'll get even better in 2021 because people are still looking for discounts. There's still a lot of people unemployed, and even the people who are employed are trying to conserve cash. So Overstock.com is a great resource for people to go to if they don't want to leave their house and go to a dollar store. Let's look at a capital structure. 
They have $178 million of equity, $28 million of debt, but they have negative $94 million of net debt. Net debt is debt minus cash. So they can pay off all their debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have $94 million of cash left over. 86% of their capital structure is equity, 14% is debt, and their WAC is 18.35%. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for that $7.2 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $5.1 billion. We divide that by 43 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $120. They're trading at $54, so they're trading at a 55% discount. It's a really strong buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is even higher than me. They're at 140 a share, so they're saying the stock is 62% undervalued. So you can see the stock was pretty flat for a year, then it jumped up, and then it came down below to where it was in 2016, but it shot way up. It has come back down, but the stock price is much higher than it was a few months back. So this is a really volatile stock. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd have about $30,000 today. So if you put $10,000 in January 2011, you would have been down right away for a few months or maybe even a year. Then it looks like you would have had about eleven, twelve thousand dollars at this point. It's come back down. Then it shot way up. You probably have about forty thousand dollars at this area. But if you kept holding it, you would have been below your ten thousand dollars, and you would probably have been really upset. But even if you're still holding it, thirty thousand dollars on a ten thousand dollar investment is pretty good. Look at this beta, four point five three. This might be the highest beta I've ever seen. The stock moves four and a half times the market. It's extremely volatile. And in the past 52 weeks, the stock has gone up 500%. Much better than the S&P 500, which went up 14%. And the low was $2.53. The high was $1.28. Could you imagine having it that low and then selling it up here? It's interesting to see that my valuation is pretty close to their 52-week high. And the stock is trading below its 50-day moving average and 200-day moving average. So it is on a downtrend. When the 200-day moving average crosses above the 50-day moving average, that's called the death cross. That's a bearish signal. And about 4 million shares of this stock are traded each day. And of the 43 million shares outstanding, 41 million are on float. So that means they're available to investors. And about two-thirds of the shares are held by institutions. A lot of people are shorting the stock. Almost 17% of the shares on float are shorted. Morgan Stanley owns 11.5% of the company's stock, then BlackRock, then Vanguard, Alliance, and then the estate of John Byrne. John Byrne is the late father of the CEO, Patrick Byrne. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 12. The median is 14.7. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 1.2, so much better than the median and average. This means investors are paying $1.20 for $1 revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 12.9. That's worse than the median and average. And the way you calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet, and that's 178 million. Their tangible equity is 76 million, so they have 102 million of intangible assets on their balance sheet. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They have negative EBIT, so they have a negative interest coverage ratio. ROE is net income over equity, negative net income, negative ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can only cover 80% of their current liabilities with their current assets. And their current assets are $123 million of cash, $28 million of receivables, and $15 million of prepaid assets. The company is doing okay in terms of liquidity. They may need to take on more debt or equity to run their business over the next 12 months. They did have positive free cash flow, which was good, but they have negative working capital, negative $39 million. Working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. And the best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, 
I've done videos on Momo, JD, Amazon, Alibaba, Chewy, eBay, Etsy, Jumia, and Context Logic, also called Wish. All in the same industry as Overstock, and if Overstock has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they're much worse in PE because they're negative. They do have the best price to sales ratio of all the companies. They're not doing that great in price to book. They have a bad current ratio and ROE. They have the least debt of all the companies on this list. And they're the smallest company on this list as well, 2.3 billion market cap. They don't pay a dividend either. So to summarize, I do have them trading at a 55% discount. And it seems like this company's positioned really well to take advantage of the discount retailer. Especially in times like this, people are looking for discounts more than ever. And this company has been around 20 years. They're starting to generate positive operating cash flow and free cash flow. So things are looking good. Let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.